The Fred Drummond Home in Hominy is open for visitors Wednesday through Sunday. After standing for more than 100 years, the three-story structure is still very sturdy. The native sandstone, which encompasses the first floor, has it firmly grounded. Inside, the Victorian-style home has an impressive entryway. Visitors are first greeted by gingerbread lattice work that frames a dramatic staircase. Stained glass windows surround the front door. Behind a pocket door on the right is the parlor. Here, history abounds. Hanging from the picture railings are photographs of Fred Drummond, who finished building the house in 1905. His wife, Addie, was a German-American girl from Coffeyville, Kansas. Frederick began his life in Europe. Frederick was uh, uh, actually an immigrant of, uh, from Scotland. I think he lived in a, a castle right outside of uh, Perth, Scotland, or Glasgow, Scotland. And what he done was he immigrated here in the middle 1800s. And after traveling around for several years, he actually took a job trading with the Osage Indians in uh, Pahuska IT. Manager Beverly Whitcomb explains that in the mid-1800s, Frederick started the Drummond Cattle Company. He was also a banker, had real estate holdings, and was at one time the mayor. His wealth is reflected in every room, and in every room, you can see how a large family of six once enjoyed themselves. Sheet music is plentiful. It was used by the pianists in the family who played on this upright piano built in New York in 1849. There are also many old record albums that were played on this Victrola. In each room, original area rugs remain, left overlapping each other as was done in the day. Across the hall is the dining room. Here, the family would dress for dinner and eat on fine French Haviland china. The buffet would hold the food prepared by Mrs. Drummond in the kitchen on the back of the house. She was primarily a, an outdoor girl. She raised uh, uh, chickens, sold eggs, and she also uh, she had milk cows. So she was able to churn her own butter. A butler's pantry provided passage between the kitchen and the dining room. The library was the place where the family gathered the most. Here the original mission furniture remains. There are two writing desks and what was called a fainting couch. No doubt someone curled up here with a good book from the many library shelves. In its day, this downstairs bathroom was a modern one for the time. Telephones were on two floors. You would speak into this uh, section, and this part would be held up to your ear. You would crank this part right here, and then you would be connected up with an operator. On the upper two floors are six bedrooms. This was son Jack's room. He went to Oklahoma A&M before it became OSU. Here the suitcase he took to college remains, as does his Stetson hat box and his button-up shoes. OSU alums might enjoy this campus picture from the early 1900s or the sports awards that line the walls of another bedroom and above each door a transom window to keep the air circulating through the spacious home. And how this would work, you would push a button and this would let it down. You push the button again and it would stop. For an even breezier slumber, a sleeping porch on the back side of the house could hold a lot of people. On this floor is another bathroom. This one has a foot tub. The medicine cabinet even has original products like these garlic pills. In each room, you can see the progressive modern updates. There are original electric light fixtures, but before that, there were gas lights in the rooms. The basement is also full of historic treasures. There is so much to take in, you might just want to spend a couple of hours here seeing what life was like back then.